On the last couple pages of this lab, we created a block that could take in a list of points and draw a given shape on the stage from those values. In this lab, we're going to create a way to capture clicks on the stage and store the coordinates of the click. But first, we have to bring in our drawing block and our abstract data type that we created in the last video into our new project. To do so, we can go to File, Export Blocks, and select the blocks that we want to import into our new project. So I think we're just going to need go to point and the point abstract data type. So I'm going to uncheck everything else and then I'm going to hit OK. And when I do hit OK, the browser is going to download an XML file that contains the blocks that I want to bring over that I created. Now I've already gone ahead and opened the new project file. So now I have to import the blocks that we exported a few seconds ago. To do so, I'm going to go over to File and Import, and then in my Downloads folder, I can select the Draw Shape Blocks XML file that I was just mentioning. When I hit Open, it's going to import those blocks into this new project. If you read through Think It Out Loud, you can start to get an idea of what Alfie, Betsy, and Gamal are thinking for the project. They're going to have the sprite follow the mouse, and every time there's a mouse click, a stamp of the cursor will be dropped on the stage. At the same time, the X and Y coordinates will be determined and stored inside of a point, which is then going to be stored inside of a list of points. In For You To Do, the three parts of the project have already been started. So let's start with step one, and let's initialize the points list global variable that's already been created, and let's initialize it to an appropriate value. So I'm going to go over to the variables palette, and we can see that point list is a global variable that's already been created, but it needs to have a certain type assigned to it. And to do that, we're going to bring in an empty list and we're going to set point list to an empty list. Now, right now, it actually isn't an empty list. And this is a little tricky. In order to make it an empty list, we have to remove this empty input because right now it's storing a list with a blank value inside of it for the first item. And we want to remove that. So I'm going to click on the little left arrow and it'll disappear. Now when I click on set point list to list, it's going to initialize point list to an empty list. And now I can start adding items to that list. If you don't initialize point list to an empty list, you're not going to be able to keep adding items to it. You're going to get some sort of error, something like expecting list but receiving number or something else. Step two is going to be the code that allows the sprite to follow the mouse around the stage. Let's click on the script to run it and it should forever go to the mouse pointer, which it looks like it's doing. But we don't want this to be the case. We want to have a way to stop this script from running. So in for you to do 3B, it says to replace the forever block with one that will loop until the user presses the space bar. So basically, we want to go to the mouse pointer until the space bar is pressed. Let's try using the repeat until block instead of forever. So I'm going to go over to the control palette and I'm going to drag in the repeat until block. Let me just move this down. Let me stop the running script. And instead of forever going to mouse pointer, I'm going to repeat go to mouse pointer until someone presses the space bar. Now I have to detect when the space bar is pressed. So I'm going over to sensing and let me bring over this hexagon block that says key space is pressed. And that should work actually. So if I run this script, it's going to follow the mouse pointer. And then when I press the space bar, it's going to stop. Step three is going to need some work. It looks like we're able to stamp where we clicked on the stage, but we're not adding that point to the list right now. So let's think of what we want to capture on a mouse click. In order to know where on the coordinate plane of the stage the mouse is, we need its X and Y coordinates. And in the previous video, I showed you how you can get the values of the X and Y coordinates using the X position and the Y position blocks found in the motion palette. But then how can we store these two items together? Well, we can use a list with two inputs. In the last video, I showed this. We had a list, and with two inputs, I could store the X position. Sorry, I put it in the wrong place. I could store the X position and the Y position. But we can improve on that just a little bit because in the last video, we created a data type that allowed us to abstract this same exact code. So if I use point, X position, and Y position instead of list, it's actually going to work exactly the same way. Now, how do we get this point inside of the point list variable? And in the variables palette, we do have a block, the add block, that allows us to do that. So we can add a point to a list. So this parameter over here, it's expecting a list, and we actually want to put that point inside of 
point list. So what we want to do is when we click on the stage, we want to stamp the cursor and then we want to add that point to the list. So let's see if this works. Let me actually run this script by clicking on the second script. So now the cursor or the sprite is following the mouse pointer. And when I click, this script should run. It should stamp the cursor and then add this point to point list. And we're going to see that point list showing up over here because I've already selected it and allowed it to display on the stage. And when I click, you can see that it's starting to add the points of where I clicked. You can't see that first one because it's actually being covered up, but there it is. And you can see all the points of my clicks are being stored inside of point list. And I believe that should do it. That should actually meet all the requirements of the lab, at least for you to do. And if you want to take it further, you can read below and see what else they're asking you to do. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, just make sure to drop a comment in the box below. I will see you guys in the next video.